Hi, welcome to Wellness. I am your host, Linda Lonergan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I'm a nutritionist in business for 21 years in practice, working with all diets. I'm a published author in magazines and newspapers, as well as conduct workshops throughout Northern Westchester. I'm here to show you the very best that your community has to offer in health and well-being. Today, I am joined by Michelle Bell, PhD, author, grief specialist, and intuitive mentor, who's written an amazing book, The Journey of Unconditional Love, a love story between mother and son. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Linda. I'm so grateful for being here today. It's wonderful having you here. Can you please share with us about your story and, uh, and everything involved with it and how long it took? And... Well, I didn't realize I was an author until this powerful experience came within my journey. And when my son was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma in 2001, and so later... I started journaling his story, our story, after he had transitioned. Yeah, I have to uh, tell you that when I read your book, there were times that I was speechless. Your strength and courage through this horrendous ordeal of time was so inspirational and so healing. And how long did it take you to write your book? 11 years. Every page, I find, has something very, very special that can help so many people. Uh, like the quote of, what helps me is how I can help others and what lights them up. Um, you do something very special in addition to being an author of this amazing story. Um, can you describe what you do? Well, after the book, um, I started to work deeply with other people and doing one-on-one -on -one personalized retreats, customized retreats, creating a formula and to going to a place where we can work together and just healing their emptiness within of whatever it may be. You have a gift, Michelle. When I read your book, you have an ability to write down what we actually cannot say or put into words. And every single page resonates with something that is just so healing to any parent who has lost a child. I love when you say, um, live your life and remember their soul and who they were. And also to love your life so much that it just melts that pain one of my favorite quotes. Absolutely. And even even with your continual positive affirmations, you put it in a perspective that really helps all to heal and to move to a, a more positive journey. Into a place that we are healing because we're going to be healing for quite some time in within this grief journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. I the The effort... Uh, the strength and courage that you pursued at every single step of this journey to produce and create the most wonderful of experiences for your son was so heartfelt. I believe as long as I'm breathing, I will keep his memory alive. And through these words, I, I believe that he channeled with me through the 11 years. I talk about in the book about the number 11, which... You know, Nikki passed away on December 29th, and learning my life path number and being an 11 just a few short years ago, it was very healing for me because that 2 and 9 equals 11. And then it took 11 years to write the book. And it was published in 2018, which equals the number 11, which is a universal year for everybody. Right. And so three of those 11s equal 33. I just found out Nikki was a 33 life path number, which is a divine number associated with Jesus and his age and his birthday. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's all serendipity in, in the moments of each and every day of my life, living without him. 
I was um, amazed in terms of that every single celebrity, every person that was of quality to your son, you made it happen that they came into his life, either as a mentor or um, as someone that showed up with autographs, even to the extent of a model that called him on a regular basis to try to cheer him up. Yeah. And your, your countless journeys. How many places did you travel to uh, for Nikki? Several places because I believe in rejuvenating the soul. And so when Nikki was first diagnosed, the doctor had given us a three-year window. And in my heart, I knew it was going to be just a little bit longer if we're living in that mindful lifestyle. And so rejuvenate, which is part of my seven stages of grief alignment, is where we would disconnect and we would reassess our lives together. So we would travel. We would go on a cruise. We would travel down to the Caribbean. We've been to Lourdes in France because Nikki was so faithful. Wonderful. In terms of, you mentioned something, a little humor, about the dove. Can you tell me about the dove? That this oh, is? yes, the dove. So a few short years ago on Mother's Day, I went to my home down in Bronxville just to silence myself out because on Mother's Day, I like to be alone. Sure. And so approaching my doorstep where his statue mm -hmm. was that he had given me on his last Christmas was this white dove just like standing free there. And I'm like, wow. And so later that evening, I went out with a friend to dinner and she dropped me off and she says, that white dove is still there. I said, I know. She goes, there's a message. There's something I'm like, okay, we'll figure it out. Well, every day that dub was there when I woke up. I would feed it. I created a little garden. It followed me everywhere if I went out the door. Um, it was all over news in Westchester County. And newspapers. It was incredible. All over and so Westchester. On June 20th, which is a few months or a month after Mother's Day, which was Nikki's birthday, the dove disappeared. So these messages are powerful. And when you're in, present in within your life, embracing those moments, silencing your mind, and to be open to receive those messages, so many beautiful things are healing within your soul. I love the quote that you say, live your life in honor of your child. Yeah. And remember their soul yes. and how they led their life. Mm. Those are two things I think about every every single day and to, to be positive and live in the moment. Mm. You mentioned about these seven stages of grief alignment. Can you share each one and, and just an example of each? Sure. The seven stages of grief alignment is living with intent. Hence, living with purpose in honor of our loved one. Embrace. E, express. Express would be emotional journaling, journaling um, using that pen as your therapist, spilling your guts. M, it, and to meditate, um, to silence your mind and be open to receive those messages. B, be present. Embrace the beauty of monotasking because we all do three to five things a day. So embracing the moment of monotasking. Rejuvenate, disconnect, go on vacation. <laughs> awaken, and awaken would be to turn your actions inward, to observe yourself while you're rejuvenating, of course, on that vacation. And then to connect, and to connect would be self-compassion. And we need to, to have self-compassion and to love ourselves. And so um, the last one has a lot to do with you and eating healthy. Mm -hmm. And you have helped me in so many ways in, in um, manifesting that, that eating healthy in my journey and savoring the silence, the flavor, 
smaller portions, um, utensil release, all of that stuff. It's all yeah. you. It, it, it was interesting because <laughs> I've been a nutritionist for 21 years as an MSRDN, and I indicate the importance of selecting healthy food, whole foods, um, savor the moment as you share in terms of being aware of the color and the textures and the flavors. I always say that necessity is eating, but um, eating intelligently is an art. Absolutely. To really enjoy the and just unplug and enjoy texture, art, flavors, and savor savor the experience. So I, I try to do that as a nutritionist uh, for my patients. And I, I also, with them. yeah, do that a lot in my retreats eating healthy, yeah. all of the seven stages of grief alignment. If we could just do one of those a day. Whew, oh they're, so, they're so helpful, Michelle. And I know that anyone, a parent who has lost a child, anyone that reads your book, it's going to be inspirational and a very helpful tool because each page, each page as I shared, is very valuable in the healing process. And I will say it again, I love live your life in honor of your child, mm. remember their soul and how they led their life. Those are two very poignant um, affirmations. And I like to live with, you don't know what strong is till strong's your only choice because some days are easier than others. They are, and I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you that you were open to receive the words that were written within my story. Absolutely. Because they they are very healing. I I get every day I I get a message from a mother who is reaching out and just I, I just wish that I could touch and hug them. Those those are the things I like to do on my retreats. I love to embrace someone's soul. That's it's terrific. That is it's my life. Poignant and journey your life journey <laughs> no it is um we have just a couple of minutes to finish up do you have anything last that you want to share with my viewers in terms of your book or what you do or how you help what's important is your journey within your life in your life path and that is where unalom comes in the story of unalom is within the book uh, just a very poignant story that I share about life and a journey to peace and enlightenment, the steps that we take, the twists, the turns, the obstacles that we face. We all come at one point to a place of peace within, but we can always go back, but we go back more empowered. End by using the seven stages, at least one of them of grief alignment. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for my amazing necklace and mm -hmm. earrings as you wear it. I will cherish it always. Um, it has been such an honor to have you on my show and to share all you are to my viewers. Um, your seven stages of grief alignment are so important and so powerful and deal with so many different aspects of how we feel as a parent. And if we just take the time to do them, as you have shared in your book, I think it would help a tremendous amount of people. I really do. You are helping a tremendous amount of people in your grief meet and greet, your little grief circle that you're sharing with the seven stages of grief alignment. Yes, I have a grief support group um, that meets the first Tuesday of the month, um, 6.30 to 7.30 at Sarah's House of Health. Remember, when you eat well and select great foods, be physically active. It's something you want to continue for the rest of your life. Eat well and be well. Thank you.